In this video, we're going to share with you our visit to Sun Studios. And about the story of the Million Dollar Quartet. Hello there, pair of peeps, and welcome to another episode of Our Haunted Travels. I am your host, Sean Donnelly. And I'm your co-host, Mary Ann Donnelly. That's right. Last week, we did a video about our visit to Graceland. And during that trip, we also had to stop at Sun Studios. Of course. Oh, that was one of the ones that was on my bucket list. Mm -hmm. But again, we don't have very much footage. No, because again, it was or in nice, 2008 clear pictures. Yeah. and the camera so, sucked. <laughs> yeah, we're going to do it like the video we did last week. And we don't have as many pictures, but it's kind of cool anyways. Yeah. But before we get into that, if you're into the paranormal, history, forensic, and travel type videos, don't forget to hang. But before we get into that, if you're into the paranormal, history, forensic, and travel type videos, don't forget to ding that little bell. Don't forget to hit subscribe button and ding that little bell. <laughs> All right, take three. <laughs> but before we get into that, if you're into the paranormal, history, forensic, and travel type videos, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ding that little bell so you'll hear from us next time we post a new video. All right, so Sun Studios. Oh, this place was cool. And this was one of the ones where I searched and searched and searched and searched and searched and, searched and then searched some more to try to find paranormal claims so it would get into the database. But now we're putting things into like a separate database that are more historical. Didn't have that at the time because this would actually fell under a historical location. Mm -hmm. But I did find a paranormal claim eventually. Ooh. We'll talk about that here in a little bit. We are talking about Panic D number 2095. That is Sun Studio is located at 706 Union Avenue in Memphis, Tennessee. And yes, during the day, it is open to the public that you can take a tour. But not at night. At night, it's a recording studio again. So this place is rocking and rolling 24-7. Literally. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, had to be said. Well, for the history, you're going to be on camera, like our last video. Mm -hmm. But that's okay. We got some comments. People, like, didn't care. They, really? Like, Go ahead. Tell your story. Cool. So, all right. We're going to tell our story. All right. But for the history, go ahead. Hit it. All right. Well, Sun Studio, as we had kind of already alluded to, is a recording studio. It was opened by rock and roll pioneer Sam Phillips way back in 1950. So it was January 3rd of 1950 when he opened it, and it was originally called the Memphis Recording Service, sharing the same building with a Sun Records label business. Do you want me to explain that? Go ahead. So the Memphis Recording Service was you could come in and just record a song, whatever you want. That's what he did, mainly. Mm -hmm. Sun is when he signed people to his record. Mm -hmm. That's how Elvis, Elvis originally came in mm -hmm. to record a song for his mom on yeah. the record yeah. at the Memphis Recording Service. That's right. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. No. Go ahead. <laughs> That's perfect. All right. Well... <laughs> It is the location, reportedly, of where the first rock and roll single was ever recorded. It was Jackie Brenston and his Delta Cats recording Rocket 88, and that was in 1951. And the song composer was Ike Turner, and he played keyboards on that recording, leading the studio to claim the status of the birthplace of rock and roll. How about that? Yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. Pretty cool historical place. But that's not all. There's more. But wait, there's more. <laughs> Blues and rock and roll artists like Howlin' Wolf, Junior Parker, Little Milton, B.B. King, James Cotton, Rufus Thompson, Roscoe Gordon, they all recorded there in the early 1950s. And then rock and roll country music and rockabilly artists came into the play, and they were th individuals like... Johnny Cash, Elvis Presley, Carl Perkins, Roy Orbison, Charlie Feathers, Ray Harris, Warren Smith, and Jerry Lee Lewis. 
We forgot Charlie Rich. Oh, you wanted me to name them all? Yeah. <laughs> all right, poor Charlie. I'll oh, leave Charlie in too. <laughs> Well, they recorded in the mid to late 1950s until the studio outgrew the Union Avenue location. At that time then, Sam Phillips opened a larger facility called the Sam C. Phillips Recording Studio. This is better known as Phillips Recording, and in 1959, they replaced that older facility with that new one. Since Phillips had invested in the Holiday Inn hotel chain earlier, he also recorded artists starting in 1963 on the label Holiday Inn Records. Well, in 1957, Bill Justice recorded his Grammy Hall of Fame song, Raunchy, for Sam Phillips and worked as a musical director at Sun Records. In 1969, Sam Phillips sold the label to Shelby Singleton and there was no recording related or label related activity again in the building until September of 1985. At that time, class of 55 recording sessions with Carl Perkins, Roy Orbison, uh, Jerry Lee Lewis, and Johnny Cash all were produced by Chips Moman. Well, in 1987, the original building housing the Sun Records label and the Memphis Recording Service was reopened by Gary Hardy as Sun Studio, and a recording label and tourist attraction that has attracted many notable artists such as U2, Def Leppard, Bonnie Ray, and Ringo Starr all started to visit again. And of course the Donleys. Yeah, of course the Donleys. But we didn't record a song. No. Too many people. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I just... I'm really excited about this place, but I want to add to the history a little bit, okay? okay? Because there's there's probably kids, I know we have fans, that are like, probably, I don't even know if everyone knows who Elvis is, to be honest with you. Oh my gosh. I would hope don't? so. They don't know who JFK is. That's true. Okay? Yeah. So, if they don't know who Elvis is, well, that movie just came out. They probably know who Elvis is. Okay. But this is where Elvis got his start, was at Sun Studios. Now, <clears throat> like I said... Um, Sam Phillips started out just recording songs. Anybody would come in, he would record a song for him. Mm -hmm. I think. And then if there were people that were good, he would sign them to his record and produce the records himself. Well, he got in trouble. He got in trouble for recording a song that sounded like somebody else that was already on, that had a record out, was playing on the radio, and he got sued for copyright and he lost. And he owed big money in a lawsuit. Okay, mm -hmm. This is kind of what led to well, there was a couple things. First of all, Elvis was starting to get big in the area. And Colonel Parker got involved and came to Sam Phillips like in February of, uh, what did I say that was, 55? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And said, hey, you, you know, Elvis is going to be too big. You cannot, like, keep up with him. He's going to explode. We want you to sell the contract to a bigger label. Okay. And he's like, whatever. Okay. But then, you know, of course, he's in trouble. He's getting in massive debt. He's getting ready to lose everything. So he threw out a number. He said, all right, $35,000, which is astronomical back then. That's like equivalent to like 380 some thousand dollars Like, it just didn't happen back there, especially since Elvis wasn't nationally known yet. Right. He was thinking that, okay, he's going to throw out that number. Nobody, They're not going to bite on it, and it's going to be a number that nobody else will bite on it, and he would keep control. You know, Elvis signed yeah. until he could get out of debt, right? But it kind of backfired. <clears throat> well, Colonel Tom Parker made it happen. He went to RCA, got the money, they bought the contract, and that was in November of 1955. Sam Phillips lost it the contract for Elvis. Now you would think, oh poor Sam. Well he had Jerry Lee Lewis, he had, you know, other artists, big big name artists, which we're gonna talk about here in a little bit. But he also invested a lot of money, a lot of his money that he got from the sale of this into the Holiday Inn chain. Mm -hmm. He was like one of the founders of <laughs> it. And you know, that just led to him being extremely wealthy, you know. Once Holiday Inn took off. But anyways, I thought that needs to be added because that's kind of like a cool history. And we don't have that on Panic D, but if you, you research that, yeah. you can find that. So why don't we go through our... Oh, wait, before we get into that, we're going to talk about the paranormal. 
I said I found a paranormal. You did say that. So at the beginning of the video, I mentioned that this is an actual recording studio at night. People can rent mm -hmm. it out. Mm -hmm. The paranormal report that I found was, okay, so the second floor of the studio is actually a museum. We're going to show you some pictures we went through there. They were in the recording studio, and it was quiet, and they were getting ready to lay down some tracks, and they heard what they thought were people walking upstairs in the uh, museum. So they made their way through to go see what was going on, and mm -hmm. of course there was nobody there. Okay, but then after they were talking about it, they found out like from some of the employees and stuff. Oh yeah, there's all kinds of weird stuff that happens here. You know, people get touched and all kinds of stuff. So there's mm. a little bit of activity there. Okay. I don't know if any reported deaths or tragedies or anything, but you know, there's a lot of people that go through there. That's a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. People want to come back to it. It's very famous and yeah, yeah. So that's kind of interesting. So there's the paranormal part. Very cool. Let's get on to our personal experiences, the tour. All right? <laughs> okay. Okay. So this was 2008, October of 2008. Um, this was not the same day we went to Graceland. It was a no. different day. Yeah. And you had time to go through these pictures, so you kind of know what's going on here, right? Not like <laughs> the last video where I just smacked you cold and said, here, tell me about that picture. <laughs> We could say that. All right, so we don't have a lot because no. we couldn't take flash photography inside, and there were a lot of people on the tour with us. There were a number of them. So I was surprised that at the number for the size of the facility. Yeah, it's pretty small. Yeah, I think that was the thing that struck me most was how small it actually is. Right. So the two-story building that you see next to it actually at one time and i think this is when sun was there that was like a diner or a restaurant at one time um but now it like houses like the bottom floor of course is the gift shop of course. and the upstairs is where the museum is the the side on the left there where it says sun is actually the recording studio um and the office is up front where phillips and his secretary were up front okay Okay, so this is the back of the the building. Uh, I think that's where you park. We were heading up towards the the front. I don't know why we took a picture of that. Of the door I think being it was open. was it because I, of the logo. I think it was the logo was there and the door was open, and it was like, ooh, the yeah. door's open. Ooh, what's going on yeah. inside there? <laughs> okay, there's me standing out front. Yay. Look at that dark hair. <sighs> yeah. So I think you were trying to get a picture of the uh, sign. Mm -hmm. there. Okay. But keeping you there as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah, there. All right, so that's a placard they have out front, historical placard about Elvis recording here, which basically we went over. Um, and there's about some of the other recording artists, which you talked about already. Okay. Uh, the shot outside. Oh, National Landmark. That we that wasn't in our that history. We didn't list that in our history. That 2003, yeah. it was recorded on a National Landmark. So mm -hmm. here we go, going inside. I was really excited. You I were. really wanted to go to this. You place, were really excited, so. and I tried to photograph you as yeah, much being, as I could. Being because excited because really I hardly ever either. show excitement. But <laughs> um, and then here we start getting blurry. This is some of the memorabilia and the thing. Um, yeah, some the of them I. I, I they're gonna get real bad. <laughs> yeah, these were the uh, devices that were used to make the recordings. Mm -hmm. Old record player. There's a chair that BB King BB used King. when he recorded there. Yeah, some old records. It's an instrument used by somebody. <laughs> it's too blurry. You can't even read who that is. So if somebody knows, let us know down in the comments. Now, here's a picture of Elvis and somebody. Somebody, yeah. Yeah. It's very blurry, but very blurry. you can definitely tell it's Elvis. And here's a very blurry picture of, of Elvis's, Elvis's social security his card. His actual social security number. They Well, in 2008, they had it at Sun Studio. Mm -hmm. So, and his high school diploma was there, too. Why it's there and not Graceland, I don't know, but... I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know if Graceland 
bought Maybe it from lent, or, or whatever. lent it out or you yeah. know how sometimes museums will loan things to other museums for a while yeah so well that one's a that's a better more focus yeah that one's much better yeah. we should have just deleted the other one should have so this All is right. inside the studio yes itself yeah. some of their devices these probably well the microphones may be original but the musical instruments I, I don't know if that piano is that looks like it's original <laughs> <laughs> old reel to reel and it, here's where you're trying to get shots up in the booth but yeah, yeah that didn't work out so well work out no and you see all the people that were with us on the tour yeah their tour guide now here's a picture of the million dollar quartet and we're yeah, going to talk about that here after the pictures oh i thought you would talk about it now oh well, we got a couple more pictures okay. so we'll come back to it because you have like five of these pictures we'll talk about that x here um there's an x that was on the floor there's that picture again that picture again <laughs> There I am standing next to the X. That X is actually where Elvis stood to record his That's All Right Mama, is what that mm -hmm. is. That this little room right here is the exact room where Elvis Presley walked in and made his very first successful recording. But on this particular day, he did not come in alone. He had his backup players with him. Same guys that you saw upstairs in the video clip behind him. Scotty Moore on the electric guitar and Bill Black on the upright bass. And they come right in here in the middle of the summer of 1954. They were standing here in the center of the room. And legend has it that Elvis himself stood right about here where this X is on the floor. <laughs> what? You laugh? I'm serious. Right there. Elvis, Elvis was here. Elvis was right here. Elvis Bill was here. Black was right here with his upright bass. And Scotty Moore was over there with his electric guitar. Now, these guys were facing each other playing their instruments. And I'm pretty sure that's because it was really intimidating to stand here, face this glass, and then have Sam C. Phillips staring back at you through that glass. And that is exactly what was going on that day. Now, really, Sam had had enough of these guys because for over three hours straight, they had done nothing but play country music. And I think we know by now it's not really what Sam is looking for. So after a while, he sends them out and tells them to take a break. They do that. Eventually, they come back in here and start messing around and goofing off. And then all of a sudden, Elvis starts to play this old Arthur Big Boy Crudup song called That's All Right Mama. Except, this time around, it's just a little bit different from what Sam's heard before. It's a really interesting mixture of blues, gospel, and country music, and Sam loves it. He gets the guys to play it one more time. They get it on record, and they send it to this guy over here in the corner. This guy is Dewey Phillips. Now, Dewey and Sam were not related. They just happened to have the same last name. But they were really good friends. And at this point in time, Dewey had a very popular radio station program here in town that all the kids would listen to every night of the week called Red, Hot, and Blue. And as a favor to Sam, Dewey plays this little record that the guys had recorded just days before. So if you were here in Memphis at the time and sitting next to your radio, this is what you would have heard. I, I, you were trying not to get the flash. Yeah, I was trying to get a good, <clears throat> good shot of it. Yeah, because it's a really famous photo. Right, we're gonna talk about it. So there's where Elvis stood when he recorded that. There's me singing. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't get a recording though, so. <clears throat> there's us together. I look so happy. Yeah, you really don't look extremely happy, but you were like thrilled. Oh, I was. Picture Johnny Cash. There's outside when it was getting dark and the neons. The come neons on. came on. Yeah, pretty cool. I think that might be the last picture. It is. I think it would right. be cool to have a, a shot of the two of them off and on. Yeah. Right next to each other. Okay, so let's go back to the million dollar quartet. I'm gonna go back to a better a non, version. Yeah. Non. Yeah. Wait. Keep going. Keep going. Yeah. There you go. There we go. That's probably a good one. Okay, so here's the story about the million dollar quartet. Okay, so this took place on December 4th, 1956. So this was almost 
Well, no, it was a year and a month after Elvis left Sun Records and went with RCA. So he was pretty famous at the time. Um, Carl Perkins, which is the gentleman there in the dark shirt in the middle, uh, was at Sun Studios. He just had a hit that came out and he was doing a follow-up for it. His hit was Blue, Sa Blue Suede Shoes. That was Carl Perkins' original song. You know, of course, Elvis redid it. And, of course, got way more notoriety yeah. for it. Yeah. Um, so, Carl Perkins was there. Johnny Cash, according to his book, was there to hear Carl Perkins record. And he was hanging out in the booth. And Sam Phillips was kind of tired of the old three-piece band, jinga, 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 hit, you know, rockabilly sound. And he wanted to bring in a piano player. Well, there was a young piano player that was really famous, like in the Memphis area, but not outside of Memphis, Jerry Lee Lewis. So he brought him in to play on uh, Carl Perkins's recordings. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when they sit down, they start doing it. All of a sudden, Elvis comes into the studio. Like he came into the booth and was talking to Sam Phillips while they were recording and everything. And then they took a break, so Elvis went into the room with Johnny Cash and sat down at the piano, and they just started jamming. Well, it just so happens that the engineer that was there said, hey, this is going to be something special. I better record this. <laughs> <laughs> so he threw a tape on and started recording, and they just started jamming and just kept going on and on and on. Sam Phillips called the local newspaper to come down and said, hey, there's something big going on. Elvis is here. Um, I got Johnny Cash here. I got Carl Perkins here. Jerry Lee Lewis. They're all in here jamming. You should get down here. They came down and took this picture, and the article that came out was called... The Million Dollar Quartet? That's right. Now, over the years, this I just found this out today. Do you tell. What did you find out? Well, I was researching the dates mm -hmm. and, you know, to do the video and then, and like, oh, wow, they actually recorded that. So I popped over to YouTube and there's like actual the recordings, you know, of course people put it, I can't play it in here because of copyright, but it, I'm going to put a link to our associated blog post and I will link to some of the videos that have these recordings. It is so cool. But then the gentleman who bought Sun Studios. Okay, mm -hmm. was going through the archives at Sun Studios and found these recordings. Oh my gosh, they just left them there? There were like three or four tapes, okay? He took them overseas to another publishing company in England, and they produced them and released them in, England, in the UK called Elvis's Million Dollar Quartet. Okay? <laughs> okay. So they released them. They got real big over there, and then it came back to the states was released here and all that other stuff i didn't even know that this was out there yeah, to be I honest didn't know with either. you they actually made a musical about it that was really? even made its way to broadway it was on broadway and it? everything Do you know what it was called? elvis's million dollar quartet hmm. i've never heard that one nearby hmm. of course you guys are probably watching this going yeah, yeah. You guys, you guys <laughs> i know, know i saw it i went to it five times <laughs> um so Anyways, it's out on CD. You can actually buy it. Um, we have a copy coming. Of course we do. It's going to go but into guess the what? archives. It didn't come from eBay. It no, wasn't it me. No, it's coming from <laughs> Amazon. But it's the actual... And they believe it's all of the recordings because the first one was when Elvis came in and the last one was him saying goodbye and him leaving. Okay. You know? But wow. Wow. Yeah. I mean, if you're a fan of this type of era, this type of music, wow. Yeah, yeah. I remember when we were there, I had never heard of this before, like the, the Million Dollar Quartet or anything. And I was like, oh, my gosh, look at that picture. And then they yeah. started talking about it. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, they were all here at the same time. Can you imagine? I like, would have never put here? it together because I knew that Sam Phillips sold the contract of Elvis and the time doesn't work out because yeah. it was like after Elvis was gone is when these guys were still recording there. Mm -hmm. He just dropped by for a visit and they just sat down and started jamming. All right. Well, I think that's going to wrap it up. Is there anything else you'd like to add to this video? 
I think you definitely should take a, a, a stroll through. Definitely go to the museum. I enjoyed the, seeing all the memorabilia and then just the fact that you could walk into that room where all those people were yeah. and they still have, you know, like the X on the floor and they've got the picture and I thought it was really Even cool. Even the gift shop was cool when we were there. We don't have a picture of it because there was like so many people in there, but they had the records all yeah. on the wall and I did get a t-shirt when I was there. You got there, a t-shirt but, and a hat. Yeah, but t-shirt probably doesn't fit me anymore that was 2008 yeah um but yeah that that was cool that and graceland those were on my bucket list mm -hmm. you know and we knocked them out we One, did two, in punch. 2008 <laughs> and now they're documented there you go so we could come back 30 years from now and say i remember when i remember when i stood on the spot elvis stood <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, till next time. Thanks for watching. And happy hunting. Let us know if you like this video by hitting that thumbs up. Also, if you'd like to see more videos from us in the future, support our channel by hitting that subscribe button and dinging that bell so you get notified the next time there's a video from Panic D Video. Thanks for watching. Happy hunting.